Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have an incredibly exciting figure to take a look at, one that I am so hyped for. We have the How Long Good Pentaceratops. Now, if I move this back a little bit, you can get a better look at the fact that, first of all, we have both different paint variants of it. But if we actually take one box out of here and we take a look at only one box, you can first of all see that we have an image here on the front of the two different paint variants. You've got the species name right there, the fact that it is 135th scale, and the company name right there, of course. But up here, you can see a really cool image showing off so many different figures that are in this line of how long good releases, as we have the Nesutoceratops, the Aranosaurus, the Pietnitskisaurus, we've got the Carcharodontosaurus, the Dicreosaurus, the Spinosaurus, and the T-Rex, two different color variants of it. And there are even more figures than this in the line from How Long Good. So lots of really cool stuff in this line. Of course, if you turn it around, the other side's going to be pretty much the same thing, and then you have some information on the underside. And this packaging is a little bit different than what we usually see from How Long Good, or at least what we've seen lately, because you can see rather than the whole thing just being like one box, the part here is basically a slip cover if i can get it off it's really really on there wow that's like super on there okay so i'm gonna have to move it out of here before i end up like slipping off and smacking the camera and i'll bring it back in so there we go once we get that off you can now see it's basically just a brown box not a whole lot going on and then when we open it up inside of course you have the foam and everything so let me just pull the two figures out and then we'll bring them in and check them out and here are both of our different paint variants of our Pentaceratops. And man, is that honestly incredible. Like, I am almost pretty much at a loss for words at how gorgeous these are. I would say that these two are my two favorite releases from How Long Good. Like, just sitting here looking at them right now, they really are. Like, man, that is just unreal how nice those are for factory paint jobs. The paint jobs of the How Long Good line are like next level and of course the sculpts are also beautiful i would definitely say these are my favorite pentaceratops in my collection as well and uh, that's really saying something since we've got the amazing beasts of the mesozoic version but i just absolutely love the sculpt and paint job of both of these they look super super impressive i'm very intrigued to see something going on here though because it looks like the horns of this one are kind of closed in whereas the horns of this one are extended out and uh, I didn't notice that prior with any of the, you know, uh, images, the prototype images or anything. It makes me wonder if maybe that's like done on purpose and not just warping. It definitely does look cool because it kind of gives them a little bit of a different appearance from each other. But uh, I am absolutely flabbergasted at how beautiful these are. They really are incredible. So let's jump to a closer look at both of them right now. So this is definitely going to be another of those instances where I really cannot pick one over the other, but I will start with the one that I initially thought was my favorite until I had seen them both in person. You can see, again, sculpt-wise, it is incredible. Like, we have a lot of really nice-looking scale, detail, skin texture, and a lot going on as far as the fine detail here in the face of the Pentaceratops. You can see the nostrils. You can also see some amazing detail there on the beak, very kind of rough and rugged looking detailing there to the beak but just you know as i turn it here and allow the light to kind of shine off of it look at how incredibly impressive that detail that skin texture is yeah, i like also that they've even highlighted the nostrils with a different tone of color and you can just see looking at it here there are so many different tones of color added there's so many darker tones different variations of browns and stuff and of course that continues as you move through the course of the figure but as you move up here you can see the horn and i love how the horn is sculpted out detail wise it looks great but also paintwork wise you can see we start out with that darker tone and transition very gradually to a lighter tone as you lead closer to the tip very very smooth transition between those colors as well and then as you move back here a little bit further you can see a really nicely painted eye a bluish tone and then it looks like maybe there's a white or a yellow and then a black so some nice color variation to the eye and you can see again as we lead up here into this horn the detailing is absolutely incredible and yet again, we have the same style of paintwork as we lead out. There's even kind of like almost like some spots that they've added from an airbrushing there as you move out. 
But again, really smooth transition. The horns look super cool. I like the way that they've sculpted them. Again, slightly different on this one compared to the other one. And I don't know if it's just warped that way or exactly if that's how they were to begin with, but I think it's really cool. But as you lead up into the frill, you can see the skin texture continues to look really cool, but has a very different design as far as the way it appears. We can see more variation of color as we lead up. We start to get some really vibrant tones with some orange, like red-orange tones as you move up, and that helps to add some nice flashiness in the frill of our Ceratopsina, as you would want to see. You've also got some nice variations of browns as well as blacks as you move around here, especially following along the outer edge of those spikes that lead along the frill here you can see again that we have some nice kind of blackish tones following the lower part and then really nice lighter tones moving out the detail looks amazing you can also see we have some more nice browns moving down with some more blacks that kind of spot and design here through that area leading along the center of the frill as you lead down you can see kind of like some small scoots and stuff moving along the frill into the top of the head and you can again see absolutely amazing paintwork on this as well as absolutely amazing sculpt work like man that is incredible but as you move along as you continue to move along and you lead into the neck you can see some nice skin wrinkles and skin folds also some darker tones as we have variations of browns and blacks kind of combining here and meshing which looks super cool you can also see some yellows picking up here and there as well as lighter variations of browns so much color on these figures as always but as you lead down you can see again we have like some osteoderms and stuff throughout really nice scale detail nice skin wrinkling increasing right there behind the leg as you move down you have lots of really nice skin texture you've got wrinkling increasing in the joint of the elbow the elbow itself present back there moving down you've got a really nicely sculpted wrist with more skin wrinkles as well as some nicely sculpted toes and the nails are painted really quite nicely and again all kinds of variation of color the entire way down as we have lighter tones and we've got you know variations of browns blacks all sorts of stuff even more of those yellowish tones right there but as you lead up here into the stomach region you can again see some skin wrinkles and stuff especially here in the lower part of the stomach more of that kind of uh, darker tone splotching here as you move through the course of the stomach the skin texture on this is amazing look at how vibrant that is really nice osteoderms on top of the incredible scale detail and then as you move up here you can see some scoots almost like a slightly armored sort of appearance as we lead back here toward the hip but the scoots do increase in size as you move along the upper side. And just that visual right there, like, man, is that ever impressive how many variations of color you see right there and how smooth and beautifully they are applied. And you can also see we have even more paintwork here on the back of the frill with a really cool design of those oranges and then those darker tones kind of leading and striping in. It looks incredible. And then as we move back here into the thigh, and actually specifically the hip you can see the hip bone there protruding you see more uh, you know osteoderms and stuff and then again a mountain of different coloration as you move through all kinds of skin wrinkles and stuff leading along the back of the thigh leading down into the knee and or the back of the knee I should say you can see the kneecap itself right there you can also see a big bulging calf muscle and the muscle definition of the thigh is present and then as you lead down you can again see more amazing detailing leading down you've got the ankle sculpted nicely the foot sculpt again I like that you can see the foot sculpt is just leaving the ground almost looks like the dinosaur was walking and then it took a moment to stop and look around and now it's just begun to kind of take a step and this foot is picking up off of the ground and then as you lead back here into the tail you see a few more skin wrinkles and then you have a really cool kind of striping effect as you lead out and then just for an extra bit of flashiness we have a little blue here at the tip of the tail which is super super cool as you move along the underside, you see more really nice looking skin texture and scale detail. We do have a cloaca present there for, you know, of course, anatomical correctness. And then you can also see more really nice detailing as well as quite a bit of girth in the stomach region of our pentaceratops as you move through the course of the stomach leading up into the chest. And then... If we take a look at the opposing side, you're not going to see a whole lot of difference. The dinosaur, you can see the head is pretty straightforward, maybe a slight tilt, so not a whole lot different going on on this side. You can see the eye looks really nice. The paintwork, again, looks really nice. A little bit different as far as like a few extra spots and stuff, I think, that we see over here more so than we saw on the initial side but absolutely amazing on this side as well and then you can see as you move back this leg is a little bit further forward so obviously the dinosaur is beginning to either take a step or maybe it's kind of showing like a defensive 
display and kind of maybe kicking up the dirt or something. That does kind of give me that feel right there as far as the positioning of the rear legs. And the front legs are kind of like held steadfast, but the rear legs are obviously moving. Definitely looks like it's about to like kick some dirt and maybe put on some sort of a defensive display to tell whatever is near it to get away. But again, the sculpt looks really incredible over here. The front leg doesn't look too different from what we had seen on the initial side, but you can see again the rear leg here is definitely held further up into the stomach, really bunching that skin up, and you can see a lot of skin wrinkles again leading down from the tail into the thigh and down into the calf and then of course before we reach the calf and then you see a big bulging calf muscle and again tons of variation of color as you move through as we lead out into that really nice again tail with a beautiful blue at the tip so that one is amazing but then we also have this much brighter version and you can see this one of course sculpt wise is primarily the same except the positioning of the horns are definitely a little bit different on this one compared to the other one which I did not know coming into this. But you can see, again, we have lots of really nice variations of yellows. We've also got some darker tones for the beak, darker tones running along the jawline, like a little bit of an alternate tone of color there for the nostrils, darker tones running along the upper part of the head. And, of course, you've got, like, some faint dark brown spots. You've also got some orangish colors there kind of showing up there. Just really, really impressive paintwork. Again, super smooth transitions. And I love all the subtle differences in color, just giving it an incredibly, realistic and lifelike look you can also see the eye as well as again painted in similar fashion to what we had seen on the other one and again we have that same style of paintwork as we lead up into the horns as we lead out but we have more of like a brownish tone for the horns on this one whereas we had like a blackish tone on the other and then you can see that they still end in a light tip but it doesn't really hit that lighter uh, tone until we get really far out close to the tip but it looks super cool i really like the tones of color on that as well and then as you lead up into the frill you again have that really flashy look similar style as far as the design to the coloration just different tones as we have again all sorts of incredibly vibrant oranges and yellows through the course of the frill which looks incredibly incredibly impressive and uh, as we move back here we also have a similar style to the coloration again as we have all, like as far as the design goes but now instead of like the darker tones we had on the other one we've got really light yellows we've also got darker variations of browns not that dark but darker than the yellow obviously and then you have like this light kind of like an off-white tone for the body there's also a really nice dark wash that's applied to this figure and i believe i had seen it on the other one it's really obvious here on the underside that's for sure but uh you can see as we move down into the feet, the feet do uh, have like a bluish tone to them, which is pretty darn cool. I love that they've painted this in a way where, you know, it's a ceratopsy and you never expect them to be all that flashy in color, but this absolutely looks like it could be the tones of color you could see on a real ceratopsy, and it looks really natural, but at the same time really flashy. Similar to how the Beasts of the Mesozoic consistently kind of changes my mind on how ceratopsians could look, same thing going on here with this how long good version of the pentaceratops but as you lead up here to the top you again see all sorts of variation of color with browns and blacks and stuff up here maybe not blacks maybe very dark browns but it looks super cool super realistic really smooth transitions you can see those lighter tones kind of striping through you've also got the yellows and oranges here on the back of the frill again similar as far as the design goes to what we had seen on the other one but again different tones of color and you can also see how incredible that scale detail looks and just right here on the back of the frill like look at how vibrant that detail is such incredible quality on these how long good releases but as you move back we also have again a similar look to the other one as far as the design goes where we have that striping effect and then another area of blue slightly different tone of blue it looks like but still really cool to have that blue out there you can see the underside also has some kind of like you know slight pinkish tones and stuff here moving along the underside of our pentaceratops and of course the same thing pretty much over here that we had seen on the initial side showing off the fact that it looks absolutely gorgeous on both sides so uh definitely my new favorite how long good release like there's no question definitely no competition they've had some amazing stuff the entire time but these are definitely my new favorites as far as the size goes, then we really, of course, only need one right now to check the size. We'll go all the way out to the horn for the length, nine and a quarter inches or about 23 and a half centimeters. And then for a height, about five inches almost on the dot or about 13 centimeters. For a size comparison, 
There is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack, Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our How Long Good Pentaceratops. And you can see it definitely has a, you know, pretty darn nice size to it. Quite a bit larger than the previous Ceratopsian they had released, which was the Nesuto Ceratops. And to show you that, there is a comparison with the previously released Nesuto Ceratops, again from How Long Good, two amazing Ceratopsian figures, showing you just how impressive of a company How Long Good really is. We've also got the Oranosaurus here from How Long Good for a comparison, if you happen to have that figure in your collection. As well as the recently released Pietnitsky Saurus, which I also love. Definitely, again, such a gorgeous collection of figures from How Long Good. They really deliver some of the best stuff I've ever seen. This year specifically really is like the turnaround point for How Long Good and just showing us how amazing of a company they are. Then for a comparison next to some other company Ceratopsians, we've got the Mojo Fun Triceratops, if you happen to have that figure in your collection. A Batat version of the Styracosaurus stepping in here for a comparison next to the obviously much larger Pentaceratops from How Long Good. We've also got the Papo Pentaceratops, which you can see is a very similar size and actually looks super cool next to the How Long Good version, but I would definitely give it to How Long Good here. Theirs is definitely much nicer than the Papo version. And then for one final comparison, we have the Schleich Diabloceratops. And yes, I know they do have a Pentaceratops in their collection, but I can't quite find mine right now, so decided to go with the Diabloceratops instead. So these brand new How Long Good Pentaceratops figures are both absolutely incredible. Like, undoubtedly two of the best releases that have ever come from How Long Good, and I would dare say two of the best releases that are out currently from any company, because they're both amazing. Like, the sculpts are great. They really are beautiful as a whole. The detail is extremely vibrant. There is an insane amount of detail through the course of the figure. As far as the fine detail goes and showing the movement of the dinosaur so beautifully and so realistically. On top of that, the paintwork is unbelievable, like next level all the time when it comes to how long good, but the paintwork specifically of these two Pentaceratops is easily some of the best that I've ever seen when it comes to a mass produced factory painted figure. Like there's so much variation of color that is all so perfectly applied and uh, really nice and naturally applied. The transitions are incredibly smooth. The actual tones of color all look great. The actual paint schemes they've come up with looks again super, super nice nice, really natural as a whole, and really does look like it could be the coloration of a Pentaceratops. No matter which version you look at, both look, again, as realistic and lifelike as it probably could get. We also, again, have an appearance with really flashy tones, really flashy colors. They look really flashy, but again, look really natural, which I also really love. And then, of course, being 135th scale means they do have a pretty darn good size to them, so that's also another huge plus. So, as far as these figures go, again, my new favorites from How Long Good, no doubt about that, and easily two of the best figures I've seen come along in a very long time. So, if you are interested in picking these up for yourself, make sure you check the link that I will include in the description to where I purchased mine from, Lana Time Shop. So, make sure you check that link, go grab these amazing Pentaceratops, one or both, and like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.